I saw them abandoned. Poor things. Excuse me. Yes, I was tempted to have some free stuff. We all like free ones. I wanted to do something onto it. I really did. I got inspired. I felt I had to start making ASAP. I mustn't waste my time. Look at them. They are nicely shaped, dusted, touched, stained and scratched. Aren't they nice? You need to be bent closer. Come closer. Come. Come. See these nice little traces of something that you cannot identify exactly what has happened. They are intriguing. Huh. I especially like the bigger piece of wooden panel. It's slim, longish and thin. Look at the rightly positioned little hinges lined aside and a little tiny black hook. Held by two little cute bolts. Little, little, little and more littles. I don't like repetition. But I can't think of any other word to replace the word little. I like the word little. I use it a lot. Anyway, I fancied doing something to it so much when I saw it. I was thinking I could do some drawings using the little marks and scratches. God, I said it again. They are really nice I think. But I was also afraid of being repetitive. You know I don't like repetition. It's boring. I said I do not want to do what I used to do and what I'm used to. I wanted a change, a challenge, something new, something different from my previous work. But I still think they are very attractive, the subtle scratches and stains. They are made by accident, they are probably not supposed to be there in fact, no one would want them there, do you? They happen all the time and you wouldn't know who made them, how they were made unless you are a member of CSI, huh? I love CSI. It's my long-been favorite TV program. CSI is the best. Hello Grizzon. You are so cool. It's a shame that most time they are thought to be unimportant, have no value. People want them repaired or covered. I mean the subtle marks and scratches. I think they are beautiful. I wanted to do some drawings. I wanted to utilize them. But I'd already said to many people that I will not do it again. I do not want to do it. I'm sick of doing what I've been doing. I felt responsible for what's been said. I kind of promised. But I was dragged. I couldn't resist myself picking them up, and I have kept them in my studio space for almost nine months. I've looked at them every day, regretted what I had done and kept telling myself not to draw on them. I know it's pathetic but I couldn't throw them away. I adore them. I also thought it could have been used for experimenting something else. Thought they might be needed at any time, for any purpose. I don't know the future. They look very nice to me. They are beautiful. I was scared of ruining them. I was scared of not being brilliant. I will ruin them with my meaningless lines. And of course, I wanted to keep my promise. I wanted to be trusted, I still want to be. You have to be honest if you want to be trusted. Well, to be honest. I lie every now and again, I try not to but I do, honestly. You know, no one can be honest 100%. That's human, we are fallible. I wet myself in the school corridor when I was seven. I was a good student. I wait for the next break. I didn't have any friends, and through that event, I became the odd man out forever. At the time I didn't like. Acting like a child. Squabbling over the pointless play, bursting out laughing and crying for nothing. And the adults, telling each other dirty, idiotic jokes in front of me, and thinking I couldn't understand. I looked at the haughty faces with contempt. I did not cry despite the embarrassing mistake I made. I did not give a fuck, although the story was in everyone's mouth, poked fun at me. I was a well-known crybaby, but I did not cry about the matter. 
I cried a lot because I got frustrated a lot. I cried because I was angry with myself. On many occasions, I couldn't find a way to speak out my thoughts properly. Probably like other kids. And, in spite of being able to predict awful results, most time there was nothing I could do about them. The reason why I could remain cool with all the bullying, was that I understood myself very well, as an ingrown child, who cannot control their physiological matters. I could tolerate the children, and aware of the obvious fact, it was not me losing, it was them, losing. Oh yes, I'm great, I'm great, shut up. Sometimes beautiful things happen by errors, accident. You know what I mean. Just like the scratches and marks on the wooden panels I got so attached to. But they are the thing you might be sick of me harping on about. And like Jackson Pollock's paintings. Pain. Kings. Such suffering. He started the dripping paintings, by accident. Love also happens accidentally. It's unpredictable, we all know that. It's painful but delightful. Either way you do feel something. You'd better die if you've gone numb. No, please don't. I'm sorry, please forget what I've said. I'm sure you did feel something about what I said. You are free to get angry, or... Whatever you like to be. Your coldness is shaking the pit of my stomach. I just wanted your little attention. I liked your indifference. It was different. I could no longer see you trying to live simple. You wouldn't know it. Appreciation is up to your determination, but hope you don't condemn me. Thermometer. Doesn't radiate warmth but it can be heated. I've never been in love. All my friends have been worried about me for years, call me stupid, coward. And some even enjoy making vulgar jokes about me. I can't stand it, I'd have to ditch them from my heart. I'm totally normal. I function just like you. I'm an educated, sensitive, responsible civilized person. I'm not an attractive, I'm presentable, I'm attractive. Okay. Well, maybe I'm picky, very fussy. But of course, I did like some people very much, some hairy people. I'm a human being. I've been liked with passion too. I have not been looking for a perfect man, have I? I have not been looking for a prince charming. Somebody said to me that she is jealous of my being independent, no need of such intimacy that everyone else will go for it. I might need it, want it, like you do. The intimacy. It's not my choice. I have no authority. You don't know how much I suffer from not having sex. I'm a fertile human being. I'm an animal. I sense that I need sex. But not with you. And you, and you. We all need some sex. I experience severe period pain every month. It started when I was 15 and it's getting more and more uncontrollable. I collapse in the street from time to time. An oriental doctor said I should do something about it, if I don't want to end my life like a pigeon. What? You don't want to risk yourself, risk your virginity. The holy virginity. Don't worry, I will be alright. I've been perfectly fine. Yes, I'm fine. I can't trust you. Just don't try to fool me. Make me believe what is not true. Love is illusion. I see your great big pores. I see yours too. I need some space. You smell terrible. How am I supposed to kiss you in the morning when you wake up with bad breath? Well. You don't have to. You look so stupid when you look at me that way. That look again. Don't you just get it? I do. 
I'm just aggravating you. I might meet you someday. Please don't be afraid of me. I'm not a freak. I'm nice. I've got friends, good friends, knowing me, loving me, taking care of me. I'm so jealous. She said it to me. Then I told my dear friend about that. I like the woman, she said. She said she likes her without seeing her, talking to her. She knew her through me telling her about the little chat between us. You might like something is not a fact, tangible. You like it because it's around a fact. It's around the event, not an event itself, just like your desire to fall in love. You may love your love, not a person, but the illusion, the fantasy. Sorry if you don't think it is. Sorry I talked too much. I didn't mean to give you a lecture. I just wanted to tell you about the wooden pieces I collected so long ago. Hope I've made a point. What if I hadn't? Who cares? Thank you for listening. Goodbye.